back to another session of daily current affairs. My name is Aishriya and I will be taking today's current affairs with you and I am representing Galanda Ayers. Now, let's move on to today's topic. I have three topics with me today. One is India's role in our greater international sphere and then we have climate change targets which is regarding to our uh, uh, Paris agreements. Then generic supply of bedequilin related to our TB, tuberculosis. Now, moving on to first, uh, this is India's dilemma in greater political ambition. Now, that is a question, this is a question which has been asked by today's author. What kind of global power will India like to be? Now, there are two groups of people. Like one people, one group are saying that India has to be a very greater power in our global, global sphere, achieving and maintaining its aim and taking a role of leadership in the global sphere. But there is another category of people stating that India is already poverty written. We have to first focus on our people and get millions of people above the poverty line and also improve governance and then focus on the global sphere. Now, this is a very false binary that is what the author has mentioned. The thing is that you can't basically focus only on our domestic and then after retrieving the process of the domestic then back, go back to the global power. This stand is not possible. The author is saying that we have to balance both our domestic as well as our global sphere, rise in our global sphere or else it will be a strategic blunder. Now, we need to know what is power, how we influence our neighbors, how India, India or other countries are actually influencing their power. First, which can be of force, like uh, we can take examples of USA sanctioning Iran based on their Katsa, countering America's advisories through Sanctions Act. Okay, now with this, USA is actually imposing their force over another country to follow the guidelines and the principles of the national interest of USA which is implied on another smaller country like Iran. Now we have others without using force like we can have a more of a friendship related where we are giving uh, benefits of money and other FDI investments and all. I talked yesterday about the India-Sri Lanka relations where India is offering a line of credit systems to Sri Lanka. We are offering many investments and FDI towards Sri Lanka. Now that is a soft power like initiative. We are making friendship with countries like in, like Sri Lanka. Then there is another form like cooperation. We are cooperating with Japan, we are cooperating with Australia to attain a global peace. Like that is another kind of friendship or another kind of power or relationship we can actually maintain. Or there is competition, there is like healthy kind of competition and also non-healthy like we know the US-China trade war which is a non-healthy type of competition. So we have also heard about soft power versus hard power. Now you see, hard power is portrayed via military strength, the use of economy, like this can be mainly said in example like China, where China increases their military strength and give like uh, their money to other countries and creating a problem of debt trap diplomacy of string of pearls, that is one example of hard power, whereas there is soft power, we can say examples like India giving money to other countries with need of assistance like we have a saga policy, neighbor, uh, neighborhood first policy, we have cultural ties like Buddhist circuits and Deko Apna Desh initiative with which India is actually exerting soft power to many other countries and actually growing in their relationship. So these are some kind of international partnership or agreements or force which we can see between countries. Now moving on to the pressing issues what the article is saying is that now the author actually makes a comparison between India in 1990s before the LPG reforms were introduced and after LPG, LPG reforms introduced and now presently what is happening in the economy. Now you see here, before uh, reforms, India was a weak, poor country and we were about to face a BOP crisis because we just had a forex reserves of about 5.8 billion dollars. See now, we are the fifth largest economy in the world, okay, and we have a forex reserves of about 600 billion dollars. Also, compare the nominal GDP, it was just 270 billion. Now, compare, we will soon touch 4 trillion dollars. Also, the population level has also increased, which is there is a lot of dependency on resources as well. We had threats at that time. During 1990s, our threat was not China but Pakistan. India would leave, leave like we had lost sleep over what the threats of Pakistan. We had also fears of nuclear war and there was a high time in our Kashmir violence as well. But now, 
these are not the factors of threat which is causing distress to India, but that is the China emerging as our new threat. Also the foreign relations, that time 1990s we can see that the USSR disintegrated and also we had a strained relation with USA. Our position in the global sphere was low, but compared to now we have good relations with US, USSR and many countries. Portraying India is one of the largest economy and main ruling power. Also, see here, now India is emerged as a pivotal swing power, which means that India is between countries or India remains neutral in both the agreements between countries. Now I can state an example of, we can see Ukraine war. Now the US and the Western world wants India in their team, but Russia is doing whatever it can to actually stop India from moving on to that side and not backstab or turn its back to Moscow. Now there was also other inclusions like asking India to mediate between Russia and Ukraine to actually solve the issue. Now see here, India is emerging as a major pole. It, it, it means that India is actually a mediator in major problems in the world. You see here, that is the position of India right now. India is a growing power as compared to US, China and all. India is stabilizing into that form. Now, in this question, should we just focus on our domestic issue or issue alone? Or India should rise to the global level as well? Now, there are some kind of drawbacks to what I'm saying for this too. Like see here, India, Bangladesh compared to the GDP per capita, per capita, which is actually the economic income earned by per person. Per person in India earns only about $1,947 compared to Bangladesh per person earns $2,227. But India is still the fifth largest economy, but Bangladesh has higher GDP per capita. Bangladesh is only 40th in term of military power and also in terms of Bangladesh stand in the global sphere is also low. But compared to India, India's GDP per capita is also less. Now why could these be? We have like, the thing is that GDP and military strength does improve the well-being of a nation, well-being of the people of a nation. But to ensure the well-being of the people of the nation, this indicators are also not sufficient. Now, let us see some of the major problems with India in terms of infrastructure, in terms of Indian governance as well. We have ease of doing business that has been like, it has been easy doing business but still there are existing levels of bribery in order to start some business or such. Also, we have deep root, regional, caste, ethnic, I'm sorry, that is caste. caste, ethnic and religious division run deep still in India. We can see the Manipur violence and also other cases of communal problems still existing in India. India has a lot of domestic challenges and these domestic challenges actually distract the attention of the political leaders from the global sphere. Our pressing challenge is poverty and how to actually improve the levels of people and well-being of the people and make them come above the poverty line. That is one of the pressing issues India still face. Since independence, poverty and hunger has been a pressing issue in India. And after all this year, 75 years of independence, we are still facing this issue means that India needs some major policy changes. Now, that doesn't mean focusing on domestic alone. Okay. Now, we domestic economy. This actually prevents or diverts the politicians from allocating adequate resources for the poor and uh, for proper policy objectives. Now, if the politicians are diverted by our domestic demands, this space will be filled by career bureaucrats. We could say that is IFS, that is the Indian Foreign Service Officers of India who will be handling this for the politicians and our other, our, uh, our president and prime minister and all. But they are actually uh, not ready to take risk because the others, the policies are taken by the government. But when it comes to it handled by the career bureaucrats, they are not ready to take a risk in terms of global geopolitics. Now, also there is another major issue is that the allocation of funds for 
MEA is the Ministry of Environment and Affairs. Only 0.44 percentage of the fund of the overall budget is actually allocated to this sector. We see that there is a budget increase every going year, but there is only very less budget um, budget allocation for our, our Ministry of External Affairs. Even with rising India's concern in the global sphere, this has to be taken care that in the last four years it has been uh, decreasing consistently. Okay, now even with dom India's domestic inability, we will continue to moderate its ability to influence the world order. With this, that is a very huge issue. Now, if you are not a rule shaper, you are a rule taker, which means that India doesn't have a choice here. India has to take up a stand in the global sphere, where India has to make rules, or else India would be forced to obey the rules made by other persons. So India has to take the chance to influence and change or shape the global order. Thus India has to balance between the domestic instability which is India is facing right now and also the global demand which India has to address. Thus global influence and domestic growth is unavoidable and has to be managed or else it will be a very strategic blunder from the part of India. So that is what the whole article was dealing about. Next. Move on to our second topic. We have climate targets are becoming outdated. So this article specifically talks about our Paris, Clim uh, Paris Climate Agreement. So you see here, this happened in 2015 that is at COP21. Okay. Now this was signed by recognized by about 196 countries and these are legally binding, legally binding international treaties with which they aim to reduce or aim to actually hold the global rise of temperature well below 2.2 degrees Celsius and particularly just limit the rise of temperature up to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It also talks about creating a national determined contribution. Now this is the only legally binding treaty or legally binding contributions that the countries have to make into this Paris agreement. That is a national determined contribution. We will see what is the NDC of India. Okay, now these are some key factors which you need to know about the Paris Agreement. Now, see here, these are the targets that has been made by India. India will increase the capacity of non-fossil energy capacity to about 500 gigawatts by 2030. Also, India will meet 50 percentage of its energy requirements from renewable energy. This was earlier 40 percentage and India has recently increased its target to about 50 percentage to meet its energy demands from renewable energy. Okay. And reduce its total carbon emission by about 1 billion tons by 2030. By 2030, India will also reduce the carbon intensity of economy by about 45 percentage. This was earlier 35 percentage. Now this has been again changed to about 45 percentage where India will reduce the carbon intensity of its economy. And also the main thing is by 2070, India aims to attain net zero carbon. That is India's NDC, nationally determined contributions made to the Paris Agreement and it will be changed every five years. Thus every five years it will be updated. Okay. Now, so what is this mean article treating about? So you see we already see heat waves, we have a lot of climate change going on. So what is the difference if we reach 2 degrees Celsius and what is the difference happening now? There is not going to be any big difference. We are already going through climate change, heat waves, many people are dying, there is loss of livelihood, loss of islands. Already there is a big expenditure to climate change going on. So the author is saying that if, even if we reach 2 degrees Celsius, no big change is going to happen in this already going on climate change. Okay, and the planet would also soon cross 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature because of uh, existing going on climate variations like El Nino which is actually affecting India right now. We already told about the Paris Agreement targeting 2.0 degrees Celsius below by the year of end of the century that is 2100. Also, even with all this climate agreements and whatever the countries are doing, we are not able to slow down the signs of global carbon emission okay there is no big improvement there is no slowing down of the global carbon emission that is happening this two point how is this target coming who kept this target the two degree Celsius target this was not scientifically proven target this was actually stated by an economist called economic called Lauren William in 1970s 
he stated that if we cross the 2 degree Celsius target which would increase the temperature below pre-industrial levels which would create a lot of climate change problems for other people. Now the European politician stated that this was a good target to be kept to achieve something by 1900s. That is how the 2 point, the, I'm sorry, 2 degree Celsius target actually came and this is not scientifically derived but this was just stated by an economist. Okay. Now the major problems with all the commitments and all the climate agreements that right, focus on only a few spheres like our bioenergy or carbon capture technology, this is more focused on that. But there are other pressing issues which need concerns like the climate change cause on our food and water security as well. Now this also, this is also an area where the, uh, where the climate change convention should focus really on. Okay. Now it is also that the earth system model. This earth system model is actually used to predict our temperature rise periods or not. There is also lack of clarity or lack of clarity if this is reliable. This earth model system, earth system model is actually entirely reliable in uh, terms of climate change and all. So, how can we really distinguish between the world's 1.5 degree Celsius and 2.5 degree Celsius even when the earth system models are not reliable. No, we can't actually completely rely on this and there is no like I can't say no, but there is no accurate way to know about the difference between 1.5 degrees Celsius and 2 degrees Celsius. Not at least in the scale required to make informed climate adaptation policy. This uncertainty in the climate protection will be dominate, dominated by the earth system model's deficiency for the next decade or two. Okay, and still with this climate uncertainty, we have India as general has uncertainties caused due to COVID pandemic and the Ukraine war, thus increasing or elevating this climate change problems more for India. Like, so some of the solutions that the article has mentioned is that India should continue demanding in the UN IPC, IPCC, that is the Intergovernmental Program for Climate Change, be prepared to improve the projections that quantify the impacts of the local scale and also India should lead along with IPCC to track the climate change and risk consequence continuously in the social, socially relevant time scales. Also there are other threats for India because if India is trying to colonize its future based on these uncertainties and infer, infer, imperfect models there is also a rising threat for India because we told you that this earth system model is not a completely reliable resource. Thus, it causes another threat or uncertainty for India as well. Also, in this we should consider the non-market goods such as the equity, the well-being of the people and biodiversity also should be considered. So, which means that the Paris Agreement like the goal should be updated according to the current scenario of how the temperature is going, how the climate change is varying or affecting you or me. So, that is what the old article is talking about. This is our last topic for today, generic supply of bedaculate. So in this which we need to know is what is tuberculosis, what is multi-drug resistant TB, what is vedaculin and what is this whole article about. So I will tell you what about this, what is this article actually dealing about. Bedaculin is a multi, is used to treat multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Now the whole patentship for this just medicine, this bedaculin is given to J&J that is Johnson's and Johnson's. Now recently what happened is that this patentship is coming to an expiry for Johnson's and Johnson's and they need to renew their patentship in each and every countries. So you see this J&J monopolized this whole bedaculin which made the whole, this is a very important drug for people who is actually facing this MDR TB kind of disease. But with this monopolization there is high, this cost is, the cost of this medicine is very big and people like, uh, people in countries like India or other low income countries are not able to purchase these kinds of medicines. So, but uh, this 66 countries as actually low income countries has allowed patentship again for JNG. But India has, didn't give Indian pharmaceutical companies and other businessmen didn't allow the JNJ to have patentship over this and they won the case in the Supreme Court. So that's so that India will now be able to produce this bedaculin cheaply and regionally so that people in India can actually afford better treatment qualities for tuberculosis. Now going back to 
what is tuberculosis tuberculosis is actually a deadliest infectious disease which is actually caused by a bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis this spreads from one person to another but is curable and it's treatable as well now why is a medicine like berakulin very important for a country like india out of eight countries eight countries actually account for two by third of the new tb cases that includes india pakistan indonesia philippines china nigeria bangladesh and south africa all the low income countries are mentioned here okay so that this eight countries account for majority that is two by third of the new tb cases india alone has 1.8 million TB cases in 2020 alone. That is why medicine like berakulin to be produced in India is very core requirement. MDR TB actually MDR is multi drug resistant tuberculosis remained a public health crisis and health security threat for India and many other countries like I have mentioned here. Now what is a multi drug resistant tuberculosis? There are various first line and second line of medicine medicines or drugs that are available to treat this TB. But when this first line and second line of drugs are not efficient, are not reacting to, uh, reacting to the tuberculosis that is inside our body, it becomes, which means that it is resistant to this anti-tuberculosis drug. So they develop multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, where the first line and second line of uh, tuberculosis drugs are not enough to treat these diseases. Similarly, there is extensive drug resistant tuberculosis, whereas it is actually a form of TB. Bacteria are resistant to several of the most effective anti TB drugs. So, this bedaclin is actually used to treat the multi drug resistant tuberculosis. This is the basic of the tuberculosis and what is MDR to, uh, TB. So, this is all this article is about and the basic of tuberculosis and what is its importance in India for this medicine is importance of this article. Now, let us some discuss some of the questions, previous year UPSC questions. The term intended nationally determined contributions is something seen in the news in the context of pledge made by European countries to rehabilitate refugees. No, we already talked that national determined contributions are related to the Paris Climate Agreement deals and plan of action outlined by the countries of the world to combat climate change. Now, this is the correct statement. Let us see the other statements as well. Capital contribution the member countries, no. Plan of action outlined by the countries of the world regarding sustainable development goals. If you don't know about this correctly, you might also get confused about this, but this D also. But NDC is regarded to climate change, Paris Climate Change Agreement. Moving on to next question, with reference to the agreements of UNFCCC meeting in Paris in 2015, which of the following statements are correct? The agreements were signed by all the member countries of the UN. We stated, we didn't say anything about it was signed by all the member countries of the UN and it will go into effect in 2017. It's a kind of extreme statement. So, that is not a correct statement. The agreements aim to limit the greenhouse gas emission so that the rise in the average global temperature end the century does not exceed 2 degrees Celsius or even 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level. This is what we were talking about the whole time. Developed countries acknowledge the historical responsibilities in the global warming and committed to donate 1000 billion dollars a year from 2020 to help developing countries. It is not 1000 billion dollars but it is 100 billion dollars. Thus, only statement 2 is correct. Now, I have a mains question for you. To discuss the socio-economic impact of climate change on India. So, you have to write a suitable uh, example. We can quote recent data on how climate change like heat waves, flood, cyclones are affecting India. You can give a small data in its introduction. Now, you can actually have to say about the socio-economic impact. Economic impact in case of agriculture, it could affect the farmers of their employment opportunity, it would reduce the short water levels and it would affect the irrigation. Also on the part of the government, it would actually increase the expenditure in GDP level because we need to make a more suitable climate friendly model. So there is also increase in burden from the part of the government and a majority part of the budget would go into helping these people. And also 
we have created uh, in the social it about elders women and children are particularly vulnerable because like if climate change like flood drought or cyclone happens these category of people becomes majorly affected by this also there will be huge displacement of people like in coastal areas we have seen this flood and increase in the rise of sea levels so majority of the people get displaced and all and there is also loss of livelihood because of this and loss of life as well now what are the measures taken by our oh, india we have the planet planet paris climate ndc we have already discussed that then the strengthened our disaster management response we have like pm 10 point programs and uh, we have actually sendai framework we have actually following all that disaster management pro protocols projecting on green growth we are developing a lot of renewable energy renewable energy sources like solar panels wind energy tide energy geothermal energy in ladakh and all so we are also projecting on a green growth and targeting on renewable energy as well and write a suitable conclusion on how india would be able to or how india with the help of other nations in international level could combat the climate change and reduce the climate below 2 degrees celsius so that would be a suitable conclusion to this as well so that is all for today we will see you again tomorrow work this question out the method which i have told you about and we will meet tomorrow for new current affairs you can get the pdf of this in our telegram channel galandai's padshala thank you